This, I think this book's gonna fall. Fix it. You're fine. In today's episode, we're talking about the Earth X trilogy and why it's uh, one of the hardest books to recommend, but one of my absolute favorite Marvel comics of all time. So the concept for Earth X actually comes from um, Wizard Magazine when that was a thing that still existed. Um, but Alex Ross had already done a book called Kingdom Come over DC that told a possible future for the DC superheroes, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, all these characters, and it was a potential future for those characters. Wizard tasked Alex, Alex Ross with uh, providing a couple sketches and some notes for what a uh, parallel might look like for the Marvel superheroes. So we did a couple sketches of the characters, took a couple notes and threw them out there, and that was essentially the genesis of Earth X. Jim Kruger wrote the notes that accompanied Alex Ross's sketches in the Wizard magazine, but it, they were jokes, it was a joke. They drew a fat Spider-Man as a joke, and it just evolved into this larger narrative. It was like they got uh, captivated by their own joke and they kind of took an idea and just ran with it to see what it would do. It's essentially a trilogy. Uh, it's Earth X, Universe X, and Paradise X. It's uh, three massive stories that all it's all one big story uh, but it's three distinct parts of a, of a larger narrative. So the premise of Earth X is fairly simple. The book picks up uh, approximately 20 years in the future in the Marvel Universe where the Earth has been plagued uh, by a, essentially a mutant plague that has given everyone on the planet superpowers. Um, so we pick up 20 years down the road, everyone has superpowers, and in a world where everyone has superpowers, uh, what do... What does a character like Spider-Man do? What does a character like Mr. Fantastic do? Where's Captain America? So we're picking up the thread 20 years in the future and seeing how these the, this change in the world's status quo has affected the various heroes in the Marvel Universe. The plague in the story, uh, it's uh, essentially a mystery in the story is what caused this mutation throughout the world. Um, when the book starts, the world's already been transformed by this plague. Everyone has superpowers. And that's a big mystery in the book is uh, w what is the precise origin of the plague? And it's one the characters throughout the story are attempting to solve. So the narrator of the the main narrator in the book is a, a character called X fifty one or Machine Man. He was I think he's the last character Jack Kirby created at Marvel. So th that's one of the things the creators of the book were very conscious of was um, taking real world facts like that and making them important in the Marvel universe. And X fifty one or Machine Man or Aaron Stack uh, is brought to the moon to the Citadel of the Watcher, and the Watcher's kind of like this big baby headed thing that lives on the moon and just his job is to observe events on earth. That's his job. Um, but he had been blinded. So 20 years of history uh, is missing. He doesn't know who blinded him, why they blinded him or what's been happening on earth. So he brings up X 51 to the moon to his citadel and says, basically you're the new watcher and you're going to tell me what's been happening on earth. So the story unfolds through the eyes of X 51 observing events on earth and him catching the watcher up on the events that have happened uh, while he's been blinded these last 20 years. One of the most compelling things about the book was the amount of twists that they packed into it. The The book is overall a mystery story about what's been taking place in the world and who's responsible for mutating humanity into mutanity. So all the different twists and reveals sprinkled throughout the book, there's enough of them and they're very shocking in some cases that it's they're like little breadcrumbs guiding you through the book. And it's a very compelling read um, because the Mysteries are so vast and they pay off. It's like a slap in the face, some of these, of how impactful they were. So initially, um, when I read the book, one of the things I hate most in comics is when a very good comic book artist does the cover of the comic and then you open it up and a different artist has done the interiors. That was the case with Earth X. Uh, Alex Ross does all the covers for it. He's one of my favorite artists in comics. And the, the artist that does the main Earth X book is an artist named John Paulian. And I hated his artwork initially, uh, probably because it wasn't Alex Ross. It wasn't what I was expecting. And it was, I thought, I found it very inaccessible. I thought it was ugly. There wasn't just, there wasn't anything about it I appreciated. And it wasn't until I came back to the book a few years after I initially discovered it that I really did come to fall in love with that guy's artwork. Um, I, 
he's kind of like an artist's artist. A lot of comic book artists revere his artwork. He's, you know, they're big fans of it. But uh, mainstream uh, readers might have a a harder time with his art because it's it's not it's not like it's not pretty art they released a black and white version of the book which i then bought too and it's the art in black and white is is incredible it's just like the, the guy has a very very perfect understanding of like lighting and shadow and how it all plays out it's like uh i'm certain this guy's a storyboard artist because he's too good not to do be doing storyboards for movies he's very very cinematic in his thinking and it just does a great job of just essentially moving the camera around uh the page um, one of the things i really like about the book is there's several reveals in the book that are just like mind-blowing and uh, finding out the fates of a lot of the characters through the narrative uh, was visually done very very well when they when they finally show the reveal for uh, where some of the characters have found themselves 20 years in the future the big draw for me to earth x was uh as I mentioned, they had done this article in Wizard Magazine and had all these sketches from Alex Ross showing what these characters, the different characters in the Marvel Universe looked like 20 years in the future. And I mean, crazy concepts. So you saw um, Reed Richards with like long hair and a beard and he's wearing Doctor Doom's armor. I have so many questions about how he gets there. That's just, it's very antithetical to what you'd expect uh, future Reed Richards to look like, but it's very compelling at the same time. Namor was half engulfed in flame. Spider-Man was just like an old fat guy in a shitty Spider-Man costume. Captain America is wearing like the tattered remnants of an American flag and he's bald and he's got scars all over his body. So the, a lot of the appeal of Earth-X was the mystery of how all these characters got to be such twisted versions of themselves. And um, that was a big appeal for me, was to see beloved characters like Hulk and Thor and Iron Man and see them 20 years in the future and see how radically different they were from the characters I grew up with. So it's logical where all the characters ended up. The difficulty I had with the book was the density of material in the book. There's not a corner of the Marvel Universe that this book doesn't cover. And uh, it's that denseness that I think makes it a bit inaccessible for casual readers. It's a hard book to recommend, but I would say if you're a big fan of the Marvel Universe and want to learn more about the depth of the mythology in the world, uh, this is a great book that kind of touches every corner of the Marvel Universe. Creators of the book obviously spent a lot of time building the narrative and building this world. The problem is, is it, it, fucking comic book geeks wrote this book and you kind of have to be a comic book geek to enjoy this book. It's, it's not a book a casual reader can probably pick up and they're not gonna get out of it what I would get out of it or another comic, a big comic book fan would get out of it. I, I, and I don't, when I say that, I don't mean to diminish the intelligence of anyone, anyone reading it. I do think this is a book you need massive working knowledge of Marvel continuity. If you are a big comic book fan and you have read a lot of Marvel comics but haven't read the trilogy, the Earth X trilogy, I think it's worth reading. If you're a casual reader or haven't read a lot of Marvel comics, I don't know that this is the book for you. I really like it. I'm making a video about it, so I obviously care about it. I think it's, I'm not the best ambassador for this book, but I'm, I'm trying my best. So if you like this content and want to see more like it, feel free to subscribe below. If you want to follow me over on social media, you can find me on Instagram at the Brave Butter Pecan. If you're looking for more content like this, I co-host a weekly podcast called Caffeinated Comics. You can find anywhere you find your podcasts. If you're interested in any of the titles we've mentioned during this episode, I'd encourage you to support your local comic book store. If you don't know where your local comic book store is, you can go to comicshoplocator.com, type in your zip code, and they'll show you the nearest store.